I've made a few videos on why I really believe that most modern Spider-Man comic books and storylines, not all, but a lot of them, especially the newest run of The Amazing Spider-Man, are pretty bad. Now, if you enjoy these, that is absolutely your prerogative to do so. I'm sure that I like things that everybody in the comments or watching this doesn't like, but love it or hate it, it's really hard to deny that a massive amount of people have been really frustrated with the direction of the Spider-Man character off and on since the end of the original Marvel Civil War storyline. It's a character that has lacked direction at a lot of points, and now, in the current run, he has been split up from Mary Jane yet again after Marvel appeared to be allowing Nick Spencer to fix things a little bit and add a little stability in the previous run. He has also been split up from Black Cat after the shortest fling rebound relationship ever, which was just unnecessary and felt like salt on the wound. And the character has been relegated to the spot of pretty much a loser. Uh, he doesn't really do much. He kind of just complains, gets his butt handed to him in most fights and isn't very fun to read. Now, here's the thing. I can make a hundred videos on why I think modern Spider-Man comics are frustrating at best and terrible at worst. Honestly, at times, I feel like they're malicious, almost written by people who don't enjoy the character. But it really comes down to problems with editorial and problems with anything that runs for decades and decades and decades. This is a different video topic I could do in the future, I'm sure, but it's worth noting that a lot of times when stories don't have an end point in mind and they just keep going, especially when they're being handed down over generations of writers, it's very hard to give that character any ground to stand on. Most changes are going to end up retconned, thrown out, or just forgotten about because everybody wants to bring that character back to a point that they can write the character at especially if you're a massive comic book or entertainment company who wants your character to keep going and keep appealing to readers. And I could certainly keep going about that, but I think personally that something more constructive than just tearing down modern Spider-Man comics and telling you why they are mostly bad is explaining something that could add a sense of stability to the character, that could actually excite people and make this character fun again. And we are now getting that in the form of a comic book that is actually coming out, I believe, tomorrow when I am recording this. It is coming out on the 10th, so I guess Wednesday, technically, uh, but I already pre-ordered mine, and that is Ultimate Spider-Man. Now, you may have heard of Ultimate Spider-Man several times before. You've probably heard of the TV show, which was fine, I guess. You've heard of the video game. That was pretty fun. And maybe you've heard of the original run, which had its ups and downs, but was overall really interesting. This is different. This is something new. And this is a storyline about an older Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man for the first time. This is a different universe. This is Earth, I believe it was 6160, where Peter Parker did not become Spider-Man until he was a little older. He already had a family. But overall, it's not a very young Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man for the first time. This is a man who is now forced to become Spider-Man when he's older. He's in a very established relationship with Mary Jane, which is something that is honestly shocking to see in modern Spider-Man comics. For some reason, there's been a vendetta against having these two together. Now, what I think is so cool about this is that from the previews we've seen so far and the animated trailer that we got to see, there are a lot of different things in this universe and a lot that are similar. Now, it is interesting to go into the explanation on the universe, but it's worth noting this is not the main comic book Marvel universe. This is not the universe that's been going on and on forever. This Earth, 6160, is an Earth that was destined to follow a similar path to the original Marvel Comics universe, but it actually got changed through interference and time travel. I could go into everything about that, it would become a little too convoluted in this video for the purposes of it, but basically there's a character called the Maker, who I think is one of the best things to come out of the original Ultimate Marvel Universe, who went into this universe, he went into the past, he started messing with stuff, he prevented the spider from ever biting Peter Parker, for example. But we also know that Peter Parker is often fated to become Spider-Man, he's fated for great things, and we are now at the point where later on in his life, he is still becoming Spider-Man. I think it's really interesting and fun because what this is doing is actually 
addressing a lot of criticisms with modern Spider-Man. First off, it does have Jonathan Hickman writing this. He's actually a very proven author. He's written a lot of great stuff in the past, and I, I would say he's one of the more talented names in modern comic book writing. So Jonathan Hickman being attached is already great. There's a lot of good art already in this, and I feel like I'm gonna butcher the name, uh, even though I've seen his art before, but I believe it's Marco Cicchetto. Um, but uh, I, I might have mispronounced the name. I don't really watch interviews about comic book authors and artists much, sorry. Uh, his art is actually really fantastic and it's shown off in here as well. And the reason that I'm talking about this is because this is something that I think could really help modern Spider-Man comics is if people decide to support ideas like this. There's actually another one upcoming in March. I believe it is called, uh, yeah, The Spectacular Spider-Man and Greg Wiseman is attached to that. Now, you may know Greg's name, you may not, but if you don't, he is actually one of the forefathers, one of the uh, one of the guys who people really attribute with good Spider-Man writing because he was actually the head lead, head lead writer, I should say, slash creator of the spectacular Spider-Man show. Remember the cartoon that everyone was frustrated got canceled after really just two seasons? mainly because of rights issues, but a lot of people loved it. Yeah, that was Greg Wiseman. That that was, a, a lot of that was his work. Uh, so to get him back on the spectacular Spider-Men, a story that is going to focus on both Miles and Peter is really cool to see. So why am I talking about these? Because both of these are examples of how we, as a group of fans, can actually help modern Spider-Man comics. I do think it's important to voice your opinion, positive or negative, as long as you're not like threatening people, you know, going after them, finding their family or anything crazy, uh, when it comes to storylines. Like it's absolutely in your, you know, field of experience to say, hey, look, I read this thing or I watched this thing, I don't like it. I don't like the argument of, well, you know, you, di you didn't, you can't make it yourself, so you don't know what you're talking about. I've seen that thrown around a lot too. Like if you go into a, restaurant and they put a, a pile of, of garbage on you know, on your plate in front of you, right? Like I'm talking like they put like actual literal like uncooked meat and like maybe uh, animal droppings in front of you on a plate and they say, yeah, yeah, eat it. It's great. Like you don't need to be a five star chef. You don't need to be like Gordon Ramsay to be like, oh, that's gross. That's not good. I don't I don't like that. And also it's OK to have your opinions. Like I said, there's people who like modern Spider-Man comics. I don't really fully understand how, but they do. But the thing with Ultimate Spider-Man especially is that this is going in a different direction with a different universe. There is going to be other Ultimate comics that tie into it, but you also don't need to have read the original Ultimate line because it's really just reusing the name. It, this is a different world. It's not the main comics timeline and it's not the original Ultimate timeline. It's something new, unique, and interesting. I really think that with modern comic books for characters that have gone on and on for decades, if you really want to keep telling stories with them, you either need to have the most talented writers of all time who are willing to push the character forward without a ton of interference from editorial, or you need to take a break. You need to, you know, come back to this character when there's something interesting to do. That's something I really respect about Japanese manga. Yes, I know there are examples like One Piece, Naruto, Baruto, uh, or Boruto, sorry, I always mispronounce the name because I'm not a big Naruto guy. Uh, Dragon Ball, I like Dragon Ball. There are examples of things in Japanese manga that do go on for a long time or that keep being revisited. But something different with them is that I've noticed a lot of them are willing to take breaks. Like if the author doesn't have anything to say about the character right now, they stop. Maybe they'll come back to it in the future, like Sailor Moon Crystal, where they will reboot the anime and they'll go closer to the book timeline. Uh, maybe they will come back to it in the future and have more to add to it, like Dragon Ball Super. But overall, usually characters end. They have a starting point and an ending point, and that's where they stop. And if they do go back to them, they go back to it in a more limited fashion, or they take their time and wait till they have a better idea. With modern comic books, it just keeps going. So you have a couple of options with that. You can either just quit making the character entirely, which no company will ever go along with. You can take some breaks and come back when there's good ideas, which I think is a good idea. 
Or you can make a different universe, a different interpretation of the character, so that you're not beholden to everything previous. That way you don't have to retcon out everything, you don't have to throw everything out, you don't have to, you know, just piss everybody off and ruin a character. You can just take the character and do what you want. And something I think is really cool about this, especially with Hickman's new run here for Ultimate Spider-Man, is that that's what it's doing. It's addressing complaints about a lack of stability for Peter Parker by giving him a family, by giving him an established life, by not just making him a total loser who's always ruining everything. It's actually addressing complaints about modern Spider-Man with his relationships in terms of not even just not being with Mary Jane anymore, even though I would say that was probably the best developed relationship he had. And I will say, first off, I'm also a huge fan of him with Felicia when it's written well, but it's kind of an unpopular opinion. But also just the fact that they just throw out his relationships over and over. They're used as a vehicle for drama, not actually for good storytelling and not actually to add to the character, but almost to punish the character. The more recent run of Amazing Spider-Man is an example of that, where in the previous run, Nick Spencer had been working to very clearly try and get uh, Peter and Mary Jane sort of back together after a lot of editorial BS that had happened over the years. And then of course, now in the new run, um, which I'm avoiding the author's name just because I don't really want to send hate towards him, even though I don't think he's a very good writer uh, on this. Uh, Spider-Man has kind of just been turned into a weird cuck fantasy where it's like very clearly uh, there's a character that seems like a self-insert that comes along who's like, I could treat Mary Jane better than you ever could, Spider-Man. And then he loses, Spider-Man loses everything and he loses every fight. Like it genuinely just feels like it's being written by someone who doesn't like the character. And something I think is so cool about Ultimate Spider-Man is that it's an opportunity for fans to support something good, something cool, something interesting, and something new. This is something that has a lot of people saying, you know what, I've been sick of the Amazing Spider-Man run for a while, I want to try something else out, I want to see a new direction for the character, a new version of the character, and also something amazing about it is that you could just start right here. You could have never read Spider-Man ever, this is the beginning of basically a totally new interpretation of Spider-Man, so you can jump on right here. I personally have already pre-ordered like four different variant covers of this. Uh, I've gone out of my way to support this and I'm definitely going to be buying the run as long as it is good. I will say this, with things like this and things like the Spectacular Spider-Men, pirating the comic does not help. That's something I want to just throw out here right now. Because I think that with a lot of modern Spider-Man, people have gotten to the point where they're like, well, it's all just sucky. I'll just read it online on a Russian website for free and just use a pop-up blocker to not get a virus. Cool, thumbs up. You obviously have to make your own moral judgments on that stuff, I'm not really here to preach at you, but I will say that when it comes to this, this is not like retro video games. With retro video games, there's no way for most of them to actually buy it and support the original creators of it. You're really only given the option to buy it secondhand or to emulate it without owning the files yourself, you know, like maybe to download them uh, if you were hypothetically to do so. This isn't like that. This is an example of where Marvel is going to look at this and if these don't sell and Amazing Spider-Man continues to sell, they're gonna say people don't care. Yeah, there's a bunch of loudmouth whiny babies online who don't like it, but guess what? Money talks, so screw you. That's what they're gonna do. So with this, I think that if you want to see a change with modern Spider-Man comics, it's important to support the ones that come along that are written by talented writers that maybe have a new interpretation, that go a new direction, and that look fun. That's why I wanted to talk about this, because there are ways to do that. Your local comic book store is what I would personally recommend the most because local comic book stores are run by people usually who have a lot of passion for comics for these characters. And honestly, a lot of them suffer financially because we're in the age of digital. We're in an age where a lot of people have moved away from comics. So that is something you'd have to look up for yourself where that is. There is also midtowncomics.com, which is very reliable. There's a lot of other comic book websites as well. And there's a lot of variants to this cover. You know, if you want to own issue one, that are really cool. Personally, I bought a few. I bought one with his family. I bought the original cover. I bought one with the black suit. So I bought a few of these just to kind of help support it. And there's actually a few more I'm looking at as well, just because I think it's really cool. The point of this whole thing is to say, I want to talk about this in the future after an issue or two has come out. 
because this to me looks like a breath of fresh air and a cool and interesting way to take the character. I think it's really neat. There are going to be other tie-in comics if you want to read them in this new Ultimate Universe that have already come out, but this to me is my most anticipated title, and I think that I could just sit here and preach at you about how much I don't like a lot of these modern stories, but if there's no alternative, right? Like if, the, if the, I'm not offering you any like, and here's what you could actually support to see something cool and interesting, I'm just yelling into the void. That's why I thought it was cool to kind of point out that these are interesting concepts. Between this and the Wiseman run of Spectacular Spider-Men coming in 2024, I'm actually excited about some of these directions for the character, and I hope that people will support them. And honestly, I don't really call for boycotts on stuff, but if you don't enjoy the current run, don't support it. Because at the end of the day, what they look at is not our opinions on things, they look at what money is being spent. If Amazing Spider-Man outsells Ultimate by 10 to 1, Ultimate's just gonna go away and we're gonna go back to the shitty status quo. I personally don't want that. I want to support stuff that looks fun and interesting and new, and I hope that people here will too because we haven't really gotten to see a fun character version like this really since Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, which has been over for years. It was an alternate universe with Spider-Man having a family, so I'm really hoping that this will be fun and cool, and I hope people check it out. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I have several other channels. I have JRPG, where I review and do other stuff with RPG games and JRPGs. Uh, I also have a channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through games. I have members on this channel. I have Patreon, uh, which, you know, thank you very much to the, all those people for supporting. Here's a little list of some of them right here. I also do have a website, Cosmobunny.shop, which is run by my wife, where we sell repurposed comic book and manga resin pieces. So basically these are comic books and manga that were damaged. They were getting thrown out or clearanced out dirt cheap. We took them and turned them into a transformative piece of art for your home, like a coaster or keychain, things like that. I think that's really cool. And I even have a Fortnite creator code. So lots of ways to support this channel if you're interested, but please support the things you enjoy genuinely, because uh, if you don't, nobody cares what you think. Not because your opinion doesn't matter, but because to a company, an opinion is worth nothing and money is money. It sucks, but it's the way it is. Have a fantastic day. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, everyone, stay shway.